On the same day that the River of Blood DLC comes out, Back for Blood is also releasing a new free game mode called Trial of the Worm. And today we're going to dive into that and show you around. So once you load into Trial of the Worm, you of course select your character and then your deck. And once you lock in your character and your deck, you run into one of the first pillars of Trial of the Worm, which is the Corruption Modifiers. Well now you might be wondering, Corruption Modifiers, well what am I modifying here? If you look at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, it says Show Modifiers. Let's select that. And you'll see that Trial of the Worm actually starts off at Recruit Difficulty. Now if I were to go and select one of these Corruption Modifiers here, you'll see something gets added to this right hand column. Meaning that Ridden Now deal 5% more damage. I can do it again, and now mutations have faster melee speed, so on and so forth, and we can keep making the game more difficult. And each one of these trees has their own set of modifiers that makes the game more difficult. Now, don't worry, if you go ahead and get a little ambitious and you're like, ah, I just want to crank it up, well, you might have second thoughts after you're like, oh god, I don't know if, I, I don't know if I'm quite ready for all this. You can go, right click, bring it back down to an area that you might feel more comfortable with. And go ahead and mix and match this difficulty to however you want to play. You can make it as easy or as difficult as you like. But now, why would I make it more difficult? If you take a look at the top left-hand corner of the screen, that says Score and Bonus Multiplier. Well, if I go ahead and I click one of these Corruption Modifiers here, you'll see that the Bonus Multiplier goes up, indicating that the more difficult the game is, the higher your score will be. So, I'm going to go ahead and select a couple modifiers here, put it in a good spot for me, and then we'll go into the next level. I'm going to lock in, and now we're into the map vote. Now, to me, this is one of the coolest parts of Trial of the Worm. As you'll see here, we get three random maps. And now this can be from Act 1 or Act 2 or even Act 6 or Act 5 or even the Ridden Hives. All of these maps here are available to you and they rotate in between each round of Trial of the Worm. If you look in the top right hand corner of the screen it says map 1 of 4. Indicating that you pick a map here, go through the map and then you move on to map 2 of 4. Do it again. Map 3 of 4. Do it again. Map 4 of 4. And each time you complete a map, you go through another phase of how difficult do I want to make the game? and then which map do I want to pick. So right now I'm taking a peek here. I'm not really sure what I want to pick. Hmm, well what are these things here? These bonus intel. There's a new thing in Trial of the Worm called boons. And what these boons do is they make it so they provide you with a little bit of a bonus to make the game a little bit easier because things can get pretty difficult in Trial of the Worm if you so choose. But if you're really paying attention here, you'll see there's another thing here that looks a little unfamiliar. Let me click this plus four. And what you'll see is we actually have a curse. Now there are boons, but there's also curses. Curses are basically the opposite of boons. They make the map more difficult. What they also do is they increase the amount of score. You might be wondering, well, what goes into the score here on the left? The score is dictated by your multipliers, your map, and then all the nasties we have going on here inside of the corruption cards. So I'm gonna select a friend in need and load in. And you'll see our corruption cards here. We have some of the, ooh, some of the new written here. We have the Sentinel class. But then we also have our boons, we have our curse here, and a bunch of things that might be a little bit more familiar, such as shredders, tall boys, volatile, charred, etc. Now something we should bring attention to here while we're in the burn card phase is that Trial of the Worm does not have any continues. If we take a peek here, it says, Hell can wait, active limit reached. There is no continues in Trial of the Worm. If your team dies, that's it, and you have to start a new run and compete for a new high score. And if we go into the menu here, you'll also see Trial of the Worm, zero continues. And now while we're in this screen, one thing that you might be thinking is, oh gosh, I don't remember all these things we just selected. How do I go back to look at them? Well, if you select corruption modifiers here at the top of the screen and then show modifiers, you'll get to see a big list of all the different things that you have selected so far. Now I'm in a match here by myself with bots, but luckily they went ahead and gave me quite a bit of copper. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the vendor here and see what I want to select. And you'll actually see some of the corruption modifiers kicking in already. We have increased vendor prices here, which came in from the player tree. I'm going to go ahead and spend some of my copper here and get my loadout set, and then we'll show you a few more things to know about Trial of the Worm. Now over on the left hand side of the screen you might notice it says Silence is Golden plus 6,000. Inside of Trial of the Worm, you get bonus score for completing your secondary objectives. So you need to play clean and play careful, make sure all of your teammates make it to the end, and then also make sure you're not setting off any hazards if you want to make sure you get the max amount of points that you can while you're progressing through Trial of the Worm. And now speaking of increasing your score, there's actually one other part of Trial of the Worm that's very important to consider if you want to get a high score. These mementos. In Trial of the Worm, we have fabulous mementos, which are basically shiny mementos that increase the amount of score that you get at the end of the level. There's a minimum of five mementos on every map. You can get more mementos if you increase your player tree high enough to increase your score, 
but there's a minimum of five mementos on each map. So make sure you're thorough when you're going through your map here to try and make sure you pick up every memento to make it so you can get the highest score. And these mementos are affected by that multiplier that you selected in the corruption modifiers. So the harder the game is, the more that those mementos are going to provide score for you. Same thing with your secondary objective. The harder the game is, the more that secondary objective is going to increase your score. So we've about cleared the level here. I'm going to get in here and get through the map. And you'll, we'll get to see a score breakdown here. The top left-hand corner, it says 20,000. And once we actually get through the completed screen here, you'll see a little bit more of a breakdown here as to what went into that score. So you'll see the map completed was about 7,000 of our score. Cleaner survived is also a very big part of Trial of the Worm. The more people that are alive at the end of the level, the more score you're going to get. Completing your secondary objective increases your score, and then so did finding a couple of those mementos. And now that we've made it through the score breakdown, we're actually back at increasing our difficulty. Now, we can't decrease our difficulty anymore. You can only do that within the round, but we can go ahead and increase it. So maybe maybe we're ready to crank it up a notch. Or maybe we had a good chance to get ourselves situated with our loot, and now we feel ready to take on a higher challenge. And we can go ahead and do that, increase our multipliers here, and you'll see when we lock in that the scores that we have on our maps are actually going to look quite a bit higher because we went ahead and increased the difficulty of the game by a pretty significant degree there. And you go through this whole process until you've completed four maps. Now for my second map, I selected Caustic Cesspool, which is a ridden hive. Some things to know about the hives in Trial of the Worm. You're not going to find a hive just sitting on a map that you can enter in the middle of a map. The only way you get into a hive is if you select it during map select. Another thing to know about the hives is that the shop is fully featured. Inside of campaign, you don't get to do all these different upgrades, but in Trial of the Worm, you can upgrade anything on any map. And the last thing you might notice here is that your secondary objective in Hives is to go ahead and find all three skull totems. You're not going to complete your secondary objective and get your points unless you get all three of them. So I'm on my third map here, and I upgraded everything all the way through. And you'll see the score can get really, really high, and the game can look really, really scary. <laughs> So there is a wide range of what you can do in Trial of the Worm. You can make it as easy as you like or absolutely bonkers. So speaking of things being bonkers, let's say we bit off a little bit more than we could chew. And the round ends. Well, then what happens? So since there's no continues in Trial of the Worm, we reach our final score and we see how we did. So I'm going to go ahead and press skip here and bring us into our score and you'll see that in this instance of Trial of the Worm, I had about 250,000 for my score here. I press continue, and we have a leaderboard section here as well. It's actually my career high score right now. So I can go over to leaderboards here and take a peek. In the regional area here, we can see a list of all the different high scores that people have accumulated so far. Now, all these high scores here are from people testing the game. This is going to be very different when the full thing comes out on December 6th. And perhaps you'll find yourself at the top of one of these leaderboards. And once you get out of Trial of the Worm, in case you didn't already notice, there's actually a new tent over here which is completely dedicated to the leaderboard. So we go ahead and check the leaderboard here and we can see all the high scores, including my own personal best at the bottom of the screen. So this was a little bit more about Trial of the Worm here. I hope it helped teach you a few things about the game mode. I hope you understand it a little bit better now and I hope you enjoy it when it comes out on the 6th of December. Thank you guys. I appreciate you tuning into this video and then we'll see you guys in the next video that we do around here.